What is going on today guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the show. So today we're changing out the brake pads on the mini so that when I'm at slush next week I don't run into brake fade issues like I did last year. So let's get to that. Mini is roughly in the garage. We gotta grab the wood That's what she said. and the jack so that I can get the car in the air and get all four tires off of it. So let's do that. Grab the wood and the other wood. Here we go. Also, I just had them put a new clutch in the Mini, so that probably wasn't amazing for it. But I've completed the break-in process now, so I should be good to rip on it. All right, first things first, we gotta jack it up so that I can get the wheels off so we can actually get to the brakes. Every time it pops like that, it concerns me, but it's just the front, like, deloading. So I know it's not bad, but it always scares me. One more pop. Sweet. Okay, I got it in the air. Now I gotta remove the tires. Taking the wheels off should be a fairly simple process. I just gotta do something like, like that. I wish it was that easy in real life. Okay, first off we're doing pads just because I wanna do pads first. I'm using EBC yellows now as my new choice. So let's break into these and replace the front. First thing I gotta do is turn the wheel so I can actually get better access. Ah, oh, it's so much easier to do when it's in the air. Okay, with it all cranked like that, you can actually see I now have much better access to everything back here. That is disgusting in there. Okay, so I'm following the Hayes video and they say to lever the caliper outwards slightly. Um, mine doesn't seem to want to do that. Okay, I got some pliers, so this should helpfully let me get this out. Cool, that's out, that's important. Now I can get in here with a crowbar, maybe. How did they do that in the video again? So they took a screwdriver. I don't even know what they did. There we go creating a little bit of access. Okay, so I have to get this off of here and it doesn't want to come off. And I don't know why. Oop, bump the camera, sorry about that, folks. There we go. That's unclipped. Wear sensor is out of the way. So I was able to wedge it in so I can get some space. And now I gotta undo a bolt down here, which means I have to go figure out what size wrenches I need. <laughs> Make sure the toolkit is latched. And then take the toolkit. Oh, toolkit. So that's the bolt I need. Okay, I figured out how to unstick the bolt. It's a little unprofessional, but step on it. Ugh. I can't tell if that's actually loosening it or if it's just spinning it in place because I need to have something holding onto the bottom one. My dad's come in. He's suggested using the uh, brute force method. Okay, you sure this is going the right way? I'm just an idiot, and it's apparently down on that side, on the right side and up on the left side of the car. Stupid. I'm very obviously a totally qualified mechanic that should be doing his own brakes. The only thing that makes the car slow down, right? Absolutely. Next off, we gotta actually get the pad out and put the new pads in. Okay, we got to the point where I can now lift up the caliper. Like so. Thread a zip tie through here. That's now being held up, which means I can now take out the calipers or the pads, I'm pretty sure. They're slightly stuck, which seems to be pretty standard on this. Cool. I don't have any brake grease, so fun. Should have bought some. Check it out. EBC yellows. Heck yeah. Look at this versus this. Nice. It's a lot of pad I've used in a year. So now I have to reset the actual caliper itself. I picked up a kit from O'Reilly's. I have no clue how it actually works. I should probably actually read. Okay, so I have to find the size that fits onto here, which looks like it's probably gonna be this one, maybe? Nope, that's a little too small. Okay, so the way this thing works, take your adapter plate that goes here and put it on this. And then you put it in here, like, uh, it fell off. It's not the most stable, I'm not gonna lie. Like that, start resetting it. After a while, it should, like that, be fully reset, and now that's fully seated in. So I don't have any anti-seize for the caliper or anything like that, or for the pads, so we're just gonna kinda jam the pads in there and hope that they don't get stuck when I go to replace them in a couple weeks. Actually, no, it'll probably be more than a couple weeks. It'll probably be maybe end of summer. They won't go in though, which is really annoying. Come on, I got the ones for the F56, right? Not for the, or I got them for the S, not the JCW, right? EBC brakes. Cooper S front brake pads, Gen 3. Yep, 
Okay. They're just gonna be stubborn this way. Okay, that took a lot of effort. But look at I got some nice bright yellow calipers to match my bright blue car. Okay, let's use these since they have a snip on them. Hold that, pop, lower this down gently. Guide bolt, crank it back down. Go grab the torque wrench. It says 34 Newton meters. Okay, it says 25 foot pounds. Does that go on? Please, thank you. There's 25 right there. Let's do the same thing on the other side. Okay, I completed the passenger side. So I'm just gonna take a quick second to get off of my butt and I'm gonna get to the brake fluid reservoir, which is back here. So I can remove this nut by hand, put it over there. That's fine. I dropped the other one inside the engine bay because I'm a big dum-dum. Let's take that one out and then these two. And from here, I'm gonna take that, this, and uh, this is stuck. Oh, I gotta undo those. So I was just checking the brake fluid reservoir because as you push the calipers out, you uh, you push brake fluid back into the system and it's about to overflow. So, see? Oh, please don't drip. There we go. That should be good now to not cause too many issues. I'm gonna put the cap back on that. Okay, I'm here at the back. I have to undo the handbrake and then I can start taking the stuff out. I'm gonna speed through it because the process is almost identical to the front. I will show you a couple key things and then we can get onto the brake fluid. I did notice a couple things though. You see this from here to here that kind of looks like a brake pad and there's another one right there and another one right there and another one right there. Oh, and there's the bad one right there. Yeah, that's what happens when you clamp down your handbrake when your brakes are still hot after flooring it through the mountains, or that one's probably from the racetrack. Don't do that. That's really not good for your brakes. Uh, that will cause issues. I can actually feel uneven pad transfer. Okay, I got the rear caliper off. Ah, oh, this one does have the anti or the anti rattle shims. Interesting. The other one had the shims built in. So, neat. Here's your front. Here's your back. That was really easy. Okay, this one's a weird one to reset because it needs to rotate itself inwards as it resets. So you see how that rotates in as it goes down? That's the whole reason. Ooh, wait, hold up. That ain't right, okay. I'm gonna see if I can loosen this outwards. There we go. The uh, caliper sleeve kind of locked in over itself as you guys saw. Oh, that's cranked all the way down. All right, rear pads are done. The only difficult part was getting the handbrake clip disconnected and I couldn't film it because I couldn't get the camera at a good angle. I'm gonna double check this, make sure I didn't overflow that. We gotta do one more and then we can actually get to pumping the brakes. Brakes are done, so now we can do the brake fluid. And why won't the lid come off, there we go. First, I got to empty out as much of the fluid out of the reservoir as possible. Suck as much of that out as possible. I bought a brand new turkey baster for this because, um, yeah, I didn't want to be using one that we would then later use for kitchen stuff. Chuck some back in there, but it's fine. Put this back on. Ooh. Okay, so I got Motul RBF 600. Um, I wanted to go with 660, but it doesn't last as long on the street, and at the end of the day, this still is a street car. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna put like three or so into the uh, power blader and then pressurize it. Look how clear that is compared to the fluid that was coming out that was like yellow. Shows you how much I boiled the old fluid. Okay, I'm gonna put two more of those in and then we can start pressurizing. Okay, I topped back off the brake fluid reservoir. I'm now gonna crank this down and pressurize it to about 15 PSI. So it's got this little handy gauge on the front. Okay, 12 PSI, cool. So what you do is you come over here, your brake bleeder valve is gonna be covered by a little grommet to prevent it from getting nasty, which is nice. Cover it with your fluid catch thing, break it loose. So you see fluid that's that dark yellow color coming out. Just let that sit for a while until clear fluid starts coming out. Okay, you see how clear that fluid is now? I'm gonna tighten off the nut. I'm gonna put on my glove just for safety reasons. Kink it, so you're gonna drop a little bit. Mmm, that splashed on my face. And let it drain in. Perfect. 
See how black that is? I'm gonna go wash my face. I don't want any of this on me. Okay, we're gonna do that corner, that one, and then the one closest. And then that should be good. We might need to refill the brake or the fluid reservoir, the um, power bleeder. Major issue, big major issue. The brake fluid ate through the bottle we were using to store it. Um, it also now really smells in here, which is why I was opening up the garage door. That is uh, not good at all. All right, I think we got it fully bled out. I'm gonna put the wheels back on and we're gonna take it out on a test ride and I think it should be good, we'll see. Well, it made it out of the garage all right. I'm gonna take it out around and we're gonna see if it actually stops. Just getting out of the garage, I could feel it was a lot grabbier than it normally is. However, I can't tell if that's due to the brake pads or due to the brake fluid, probably the pads. I'm taking it out around the neighborhood real quick just so that I can see if anything went wrong. I'd like to actually see myself too. Um, I'm gonna see if anything went wrong. Just gonna take it around the neighborhood real quick. I took it around the block and it didn't have any issues. The one thing I do notice though is that's the same amount of braking I would use to barely come to a stop before. So these new pads, I don't know if there's either a lot more pad material or if it's the specific braking coating on them or what, but we'll see. Okay, so I never actually finished that video because it got dark like long before we got home. Um, brake job went well. I have actually since taken the car to the track and it worked flawlessly, surprisingly, especially considering how bad I was doing that. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and until next time, a goodbye.